Now, what is going on, guys? Today, we're going to talk about OAuth2 Mutual TLS Client Authentication and Certificate Bound Access Token. So it sounds really fancy. It's also a pretty cool concept. It's RFC 8705. Uh, please take a look. It's a really interesting read. And the background is following. So usually when you have an OAuth client, then you communicate with the authorization server somehow. Yeah, so you're hitting the token endpoint to get access tokens or refresh or refresh tokens. You're hit, maybe hitting the introspection endpoint and the revocation endpoint as well, and maybe some other endpoints. And in the normal spec or like in the in the standard spec, in the original spec, it says, yeah, well, okay, we can authenticate the communication for confidential clients uh, with on the basis of shared secrets. So that typically means that you're using something like uh, basic auth or that you're putting the client secret in the request parameter. So basic auth just means you have a password and you put this password in the header. And of course, the communication is with HTTPS so that no one can see like the password. The thing is just in high security environments, something like that is not acceptable. So it's not like secure enough. And that's why there is this uh, mutual TLS way of authenticating with the authorization server. Because in the original spec, it says, well, uh, the client and the authorization server, they might choose any authentication method that is suitable for both. And this one is, of course, much, much better. Because, what it, uh, because the way it works is the following. So you have a client and you have an authorization server. Both of them generate like key pairs. So the client generates a key pair. This is like the private key of the client. The authorization server also has a private key. And then each party is generating a certificate. So a certificate binds the identity of uh, someone to a public key. So you can either self uh, like sign the certificate yourself for free with like OpenSSL, or you can go to certificate authority, but then you have to pay. Uh, usually like self-signed certificates are like enough. Uh, at least like for the client and um, now that you have done like all this uh, setup what you do is you say okay the client talks to the authorization server and both parties say okay i'm only going to accept the communication if the respective other party proves that they are in the possession of the respective private key okay so everybody generates their key pair um, everybody generates a certificate, you swap certificates, and then the client says, okay, I'm only going to accept uh, your response if you prove that you have the private key. And uh, so this is what the client says, and the authorization server says the same. Now, this mutual TLS is uh, sort of something that has like higher security. Usually, if you use HTTPS, it is just a server that who is proving that he is in the possession of the private key. Yeah, usually that's totally sufficient. But in this setup, uh, it's just better for security. And metaphorically speaking, you can just think about, okay, if you make a, if you go to a website with just HTTPS, then essentially the authorization server is showing you their ID. Okay, this is now oversimplified, of course, but the authorization server is showing you their ID and like the client your browser verifies that this ID is valid. And that's it in a normal HTTPS uh, scenario. And with mutual TLS, the client and the server show, show their IDs to each other and everybody verifies that they're in the possession of the private key. Now, this verification takes, case, uh, takes place on the transport uh, level. It's with TLS. Now, I'm not going to go into details like how this works. It's kind of like complicated, but it's also not that relevant yeah, to understand like this whole flow. So the important thing is just every party proves that they are in the possession of the private key. And this makes the communication like much more secure because now you're using like asymmetric cryptography on both sides. Yeah, so this is like one thing that this uh, RFC provides. And another thing which is like even better or which comes like on top of all of this is that there is a way or this RFC provides the authorization server a way to make sure that only he who is in possession of the private key 
can use the access token that has been issued. And this is called, uh, and there's like multiple ways on how this can be achieved. And one way on how this can be achieved is a JOT certificate thumbprint method. Okay, so essentially the way this works is in a high security environment, you have this client and you have the authorization server. They both authenticate with mutual TLS. So both prove that they have the respective private key. So that alone is like very secure already. And then if you get a token or if the client wants to get a token, the authorization server returns a token, uh, but then says, oh yeah, um, I want to make sure that only the party that is in possession of the private key uh, with which like that was used to establish the connection to the token endpoint can actually use this token and the way this works is uh, it just puts in like a hash of the certificate that has been used and this is of course like very cool because now you have this authorization uh, this access token and it has like an additional claim which which is called cnf for confirmation and then it has this X5T hashtag S256. Now this X5T is like a, a reference to an X509 certificate. So X509 is the format of the certificate or like or the way in which the, the certificate is formatted. It's just a standardized format. And this T th stands for thumb printing. So what the authorization server does is when it issues a token, it says, ah, yeah, okay, I have verified that the other party has the private key. Okay, so I'm going to include the hash, uh, or to be more precise, the base64 UL encoded SHA-256 hash of the DER encoded X509 certificate. Okay, so this sounds really complicated, yeah. So X509 is like the format in which the certificate is like or the standard for the certificate der is a specific encoding um what is it called i think it's called distinguished uh, encoding rules and sha 256 is the hash that you use and then you base 64 url encode this and this is like what you return in the token and then the resource server and this is interesting can do the same thing yeah so you can make like a, the resource server establishes like a mutual tls with the client uh, so that means they establish all of this and then you put like the access token in the authorization header um, and then the resource server says ah okay wait um, there's like this certificate here okay i'm going to check whether the hash of the certificate that i got in this access token is the same like the hash of the certificate that was used to negotiate the TLS session. So with that, it's this is something that you that you can that can definitely be done. Now bear in mind this is like the minimum that everybody can do. If it's a self-signed certificate, then of course like the resource server will have a hard time uh, <laughs> figuring out or verifying the certificate. If uh, it has been issued by a certificate authority, of course, then this is easier. But this whole thing serves as a proof of possession type of thing. Yeah? So the client presents like the access token. The resource server looks at the access token and says, ah, yeah, okay, there's like a hash included. And the TLS uh, session I have with the client, okay, is using that certificate. So I'm going to compare the hashes. And if they match, then I give you access. So this is like a rather advanced way of um, yeah, giving like access to resources, but it's like very secure. Uh, of course, there's also a few downsides. So for example, uh, TLS termination is also something we uh, talked in, a, in some other video about HTTP message signatures, right? About HTTP message component signatures is that the TLS might be terminated at some API gateway and then everything might be uh, transported in clear text. Of course, this is also something that needs to be taken into account. So it's it's basically not the most secure thing you can do, but it's like much, much more secure compared to shared secrets. Cool. So that's it pretty much for mutual TLS. I hope it's kind of clear what each party uh, does. And yeah, let me know what you think about this. Uh, leave me a comment, leave me a like if you enjoyed the video. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next, next one. Subscribe to the channel and uh, have a nice day. Bye bye.